Welcome to the Alan Elkan Interviews, an unprecedented window into the minds of some of the most well-known and respected figures of the last 25 years. Today, Hindu Umaru Ibrahim is in Venice because she's one of the women who will have tomorrow night the DVF Award that was created by Diane von Furstenberg in 2010. And this award recognizes and supports extraordinary women. There are, I think, five awardees before they get $50,000. They have demonstrated leadership and um, making real differences in their countries. So one of these exceptional women is a Hindu, Umaru Ibrahim, who is with me now. She is defined as an environmental activist and geographer. So this is what they write, you know, the title they give you, right? But how do you explain? I mean, she's from Chad, obviously, and belong to the Bororo people. How many you are? 30 million, I guess? Yeah, the Mbororo, it's the pan, because as we are nomadic, if it is around Chad, depending from the season where we are. So we are about 400,000 around Chad. But when we talk about all the Fulani peoples around Africa, it's more than 30 million. 80 million. That's very interesting, the fact that you are migrating, right? How many people migrate? I mean, they migrate inside Chad, or they, they migrate in other countries. How does it work? Yeah, so in this one, as the Mbororo peoples, when I take the example of myself, my own family, so from my father's side and my mother's side, I do have my people living across six countries in Africa. Which country? So those are Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria, Central African Republic, and now even Sudan. It was before the colonization, it used to be our land without calling it, this is Chad or this is Cameroon. If you were born in Chad, right? I am born in Chad. So like my mom family, half of them born in Nigeria, half of them born in uh, Niger, and half of them in Chad. So this is, I have the uncles around the place. And from but where my, do they migrate? When you say we migrate every so on yes. and so forth, you migrate because you have problems, right? I, we migrate to follow the rain. It's depending from when we live and which ecosystem that we are following. So, for example, during the rainy season, so people are very far from a wet area. For example, the Lake Chad. So then the dry season, people come and camp around the Lake Chad. So that means the only place that the community camp around the Lake Chad, maybe between one and two months, and not they are settling in one place. They are moving around the lake in the wet area. But how do they live? You know, if you move all the time, you don't have a house, right? Exactly. So people do not have house. So they have the house that they build in every step that they stop. And what do they do? What kind of work they do? How they survive? As we are a cattle helpers, we do have our main food and economy from the milk and from the milk product that we are selling to exchange with the cereals. And that's also very interesting for us because as we depending from the milk and from the cows, we cannot stay in one place to finish the natural resources. And this is one of the reasons that we have to move from one place to another one in order to keep the balance into the ecosystem. So then that can help us to continuously produce the milk and to continuously, when we come back around the place, we found again the pastures and then we do our circle of migration. Yeah, but how can children go to school or study or can they do that? As all the school and especially the modern school is not adapted to our way of living because it is for the people who are sitting in the place. I mean, you are so, nomadic people. Yes. So. The kids cannot just stop in the place and go to school. But we have the best school, the nature. We are learning every single day from the nature, from our grandfathers, from our grandmothers, from our own mom, from our brothers and sisters, from our own cattle, animals, bears, trees. So we have our way of education that are helping us to live. But 
to come back to the Western educations, I did a study in 2010 with the government of Chad around the education of the nomadic children. And we ended up only in Chad around all the Africa. We create a direction of the study for the nomadic kids. And this is also very particular because the community say they want to do school who can adapt to their way of living, not the, the adapt to the school. We But have you use new technologies like Zoom, like internet? Or no, not? we don't have electricity, so we cannot <laughs> <laughs> have the Zoom or have the internet at all. But the formal school, but the teachers can move with the community, then uh, they can settle under the tree, and then uh, just uh, give some classes to the children. Then it is not around all the places. It is only around a and, small uh, place. They speak the um, full, full day language, right? That's what they learn. Yes. The language is your own language. I mean, you also speak English, French, which other language? Yeah, Arabic. Arabic. <laughs> what religion have these nomadic people? They have a local religion? Are they Muslims? Or so, what? before the uh, religions come around our place, we have our own belief. And then when the uh, religion colonization start coming, so we got these religions by Muslim. So then most of the peoples are Muslim. Why are you so concerned? What is your major concern? What defines you an environmental activist and uh, geographer? What did you study? What, do you, what is your job? What do you do? In the school, I study a various background. Because for me, it is not in my culture to go to school. So just a thanks to my mom because she uh, sent me and my sister to school. And when I was going to school, in every break, I go back home to my community. So that means I grow up between two cultures. And then when I finish my uh, secondary school, then I say like, oh, I wanted to have some money. I have to do some study to get me money to help my community. And then I did accounting and finance. And then I'm like, no, this is not the way that I wanted to do because when you are a con, you have just to be in the office yourself. So then I went back to do project management. And then I found from the project management, I wanted to see how I can combine the traditional knowledge of my community, the science and the technology to help them to build a mapping of the natural resources. And then I decided to do an environment. So that's how I became a geographer. And then uh, how I love the map. And uh, as nomadic, it's normal that I love the map because we're always traveling around all the places. So then I decided to have the knowledge of my peoples. And then the best technology that can come from the satellite images or coming from the uh, geographical information. And then the technology from the cell phone, from the applications, and then to put it together and build a new community. You have a lot of animals. You talked about milk, right? But in Africa, there are many other animals who are dangerous, right? So probably you also have to defend yourself from other, not only the climate, but I mean the environment. Yeah, but for us, it is the balance about the nature how we can live and share the natural resources. So in my community, you can find a boy who is seven years old, who can take hundreds of cattle. They can go around and graze all the day. They can drink in the same lake that the lion can come and drink, the elephant can come and drink, the uh, giraffe can come and drink, and then the cattle can come and then the little boy is there. So we know exactly how to manage and share these resources because the time for drinking for each species is aligned, is different. So you know very well the timing of the animals. Right? Of course we have to know. That's how we, how we can live in harmony and share the resources. What about the weather? The weather has changed. The no? weather because changed. Because the Chad Lake was uh, empty at a certain point. And this was a big, big problem, right? The way they change a lot. So when my mom get born around 1960, this is during the independence of Chad, the Lake Chad used to be 25,000 kilometers squares. When I get born like 30 years ago, the lake was around 10,000 kilometers squares. And right now it is, depending from the rainy season, between 150 to 300,000 to 300. 
5,000 kilometers squares. So 90% of the lake disappears. And for us, the reason it's simple because the season changed a lot. The rainy season used to come from the south to the north. So from south, we used to have nine months of the rainy season. And coming to the north, it can be end up to the six months to three months. But right now, the rainy season from the south to the north starts from the six months to maybe two, three months maximum. And then the quality of the rain change. So the rain can come like with the very heavy rains who create a lot of floods. This is like actually these years, this is what is happening exactly. Very heavy rains with a lot of flood. We, then you have the end up the food security because when you have the flood, it can flood the grass, it can flood the crops, and then everything's roots. Or some season come very dry. So you do not get enough rain. So you get like one rain this week. So there is an imbalance. Imbalance, exactly. And after two weeks, you do not have rain. So when you grow your crops, and then you are happy that it's growing up, and then you get like two weeks or three weeks no rain, then everything dry up. So then you end up with the food insecurity. Either you have a lot of rain or less rain, so it so impacts your so production. what do you do for that? How do you fight for that? Because this is nature, right? It doesn't uh, depend. Absolutely. So what can we do? So that's why... you go around the world... Uh, mm-hmm you know, talking and trying to pinpoint this problem of your people, the Bororo people, but uh, what can the world do? I think many people can do many things. Firstly, what we are doing... Because you are very from, vulnerable, From right? our, exactly, from our places as a most impacted and living the first hand of this climate impact, we act... Because I, as I said earlier, we have our best school, our best application, who are the nature. So we observe the nature. We do not just to say that the rainy season is starting first of May and then we have to go out. So we observe the cloud, we observe the bears, we observe the winds, and then we say, okay, it is the time that we have to move. And then we move to just to go catch some of the grass somewhere if it is a dry season or if it is a rainy season. So we try to adapt by understanding the nature through the behavior of our animals and through the environment that's surrounding us. But as you said, the most important is what the world should do, what especially is, the developed the world. How do, you know, how do you yeah. solve this unbalancement? Yeah, so I think we must solve this imbalance coming also from developed countries. That's why I have to travel. I have to tell them through the UN, through many organizations, that the developed countries, they are not developed, they are overdeveloping. Yeah, but also the developed countries have a lot of problems nowadays. I mean, the climate change exists yes. everywhere. Yes. Yeah, we have very, very hot summers. And fires. Uh, winter, winters <laughs> who are less cold. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's very cold. I mean, there is the, the rivers that become like the Chad Lake. I mean, there are no water anymore. So we had this example this summer, for instance, all over Europe. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. fires everywhere. So... What do you think is the solution? I think the solutions we have to act globally because the solutions might be from the private sectors. They have to stop digging the resources under the ground, continuously emitting the greenhouse gases because this is the big problem that we all have. We have to stop the greenhouse gases. That's the first thing. The second thing is we have to shift transitions to the clean energy, because these are the big other problems. We have a lot of dirty energy that we are using around all the planet. Transport, it is the bigger issue. And transport is making me more sad because like in my community, our best transport is getting in our cattle and moving. But when you come to all the developed countries, even to the cities in Africa, everyone has to jump in a new transport who is polluting. So we are not adapting. The third thing is our consumptions as human beings. And I'm very shocked every single day I come to the developed countries and I go to the supermarket. You wanted to buy a meat, you have the expression dead. You wanted to buy a milk, you have expression dead. Everything that, even the water, they put like the expression dead. 
and then they push people to overconsume. And if it is a spiral, you have just like to throw it. In my community and in my culture, nothing that we are using to get inspired. No, we are not using a lot of resources. If you eat the food and it's remain, you give it to your neighbors or you dry it up to eat it or to give it to your uh, animals. You never root any food or put an expression that I get always shocked. Tell me something, we just are in the middle or we came out, we don't know yet from the virus, right? This mm -hmm. coronavirus mm -hmm. who has been uh, killing millions of people, six million people around the world who is still on, try to find new vaccines and so on and so on. How did this coronavirus affected your people in Africa? So in Africa, in general, we do not see that as a big threat. And then the solutions also have been very different. I give you the examples. So when it started, I was in Chad, and then all the country around the world, they start like closing the borders and keeping the people that you do not go out, closing the market and all. They did that only for one week. And then they stop, yeah. And then they stop. What about there the is, vaccine? The vaccine, we do not have the access to the vaccine. But you have been vaccinated. I have been vaccinated because yes. I'm so privileged, and I say I, I'm so lucky because I found myself in Europe, and then it's have been an obligation to get vaccinated to protect myself, but to protect my family. But like in my community, people do not get the COVID, but they get the impact of the COVID. Which is what? Which is the economic impact. When they start closing the market, as we are relying to the market every single day, so you go and sell your milk and buy the cereal. So when there is no market, you cannot exchange your product. And then you have just to stick with your product and other person have to stick with his product. And then economically, we get impacted and then it's increased the food insecurity. The consequences of COVID are much huge in Africa than the COVID himself. But um, there are many other illnesses in Africa, no? Of course. What kind of continent, of country is Africa, if you had to describe it today? I mean... In this post-colonial time where many, almost all countries have their independence and they... I mean, we talk about many countries, but maybe we should know a little more about what's going on in Africa. And in particular in Chad, your own country. We can say there is progress, but it is very slow. So the progress is really, really slow and it is very little because there is injustice because there is the capitals who get more opportunity than the rural areas. But when you take all Africa, most of the populations depend from the agriculture, fishery, or pastoralists like my peoples. And then all of them are not doing those activities in the city. They are doing it in the rural areas. And those rural areas are not giving the chance or the opportunities to go and grow up as the rest of the city. So when you come in Jemena, so in Jemena is the capital city where sometimes you do not have electricity, sometimes you do not have clean water. And it is the place where you can just like think you can have schools, you can have hospitals. But when you go out from the city, it's completely different. No access to the schools, no access to the health care and then no access to the electricity. So we just like talking about the internet. If you don't have electricity, you cannot think about having internet or having communication. So then, probably people don't really know what happens elsewhere in the world, or they do? No, most of the peoples do not know what's happening around the world because there is no communications. So it's still a quite a primitive existence, right? It's still, it's still a very challenging, and I mean, it's still But what do gap. you want in your fight? You want to, them to change or you want them to keep their original life? You know, are they very unhappy about the way they live? Do they really need to change? I think depending from what we are calling change. For me, I'm calling the change that, like from my peoples, I will love them to continuously doing their life that they are doing because this is the only way that we are protecting the nature. We are learning more about the nature. We are protecting our identity. But however, we wanted to have more access to the clean energy and then they can have a light 
they can have access to the energy to better develop our milk or our products to get access to the market as infrastructure then exchange with the other peoples and feed those peoples because if you are producing a lot and you are self growing and self sufficient so you don't need to export and import from other countries so you have to mitigate the uh, food insecurity and getting access to the education that they want not impost the education you know what one of the anecdote that i get from the community when i was doing the study around the uh, education to the nomadic kids they say we are not rejecting the education but we don't want to the educations who do not respect our culture they say when we go to school and then they start telling us the history of france we don't care about that we care about the history when they tell us how you can better manage your natural resources we we want to the school who can tell us how you can do your accounting so we want to the school who can help us to cope with our daily life but not the things who are useless from us so this kind of progress or education that's the one i want to my peoples and that's what they want we are not imposing to them but they choosing themselves but you are not only fighting for your own people right you are also fighting for a general environmental advocacy right because your people have particular problems and so on and so forth there are many many people around the world who have problems including the western countries right for instance now that mm-hmm. we have a war going on countries like germany who were going to be greener and greener if they have so much problems with gas they will be obliged to go back to coal right mm-hmm. in order to survive winter or, or the cost of energy that is coming huge in this country so, and this is an unpredictable thing right i mean politics uh, and wars yeah i mean there's a lot of good will for in the world mm-hmm. encounters in paris if i am not wrong a few years ago right where president trump was not very favorable but many other leaders and countries were mm, where are we standing now i think people's got power the politic can impose or decide but who elect the politicians peoples so if peoples elect the right politicians we can change the game about the energy about the warm about all what is happening because it is happening right now and people are seeing only above the nose they are seeing only the solution for today for 10 years or maybe for 30 years we are not thinking about 100 years that are coming no politicians so, thinks about next week to be re-elected exactly. right exactly so that that's what they are thinking so then i think the citizen must think differently about the 100 years 200 years in my community we have a culture that you have to learn from our seven past generation so i have to know my grandfather my great grandfather into seven of them know them know what they did and that can help me if i take a decisions i have to take the decision for the next seven upcoming generations if i take it today i say i'm going to talk i have to talk not only for me or for my children or for my great children i have to talk for the seven upcoming generation so citizen get the power we must decide on who is thinking about our long term not about the tomorrow election and when we are thinking about yes we need the solution today yes the winter is coming we want to have the energy but if we continuously about the winter of today the winter of tomorrow people are not shifting to the renewable energy country like germany they get a chance they are rich they have technology they have money they have people why they cannot shift and go to the renewable energy but they try trying is not a solutions they must do what we are doing in my peoples people are not trying people are doing because it is survival so when like in europe people have fire then they have drought they are not trying to just uh, get out from the flood or from the drought they have to do they have to change what they did just like a weeks ago in paris when the drought became they take a solution saying that every single person have to use a limited amount of the liters of the water so they are not trying they are doing 
And when there was flood around the place, they evacuate people. So they are not trying to fight it, they are doing. So Germany and all the rest of the countries must to do. How do you feel? I mean, all these are very interesting words, very interesting purposes. There's surely a big lobby around the world which has given mm. to sustainability mm. a great import. Even industrialists nowadays, they are obliged, you know, there are many changes also in the world of women. I mean, tomorrow you will get the award as an exceptional woman. But I mean, even if women are still treated uh, with a lot of difficulty, still they made a great uh, deal of progress, right? I mean, I know it's not your fault, but the condition of a woman nowadays has changed a lot since uh, mm. the beginning of my own life, for instance, right? There is something positive going on, or not? There is something positive is going on, and this is one of the examples of the positive things that's happening around this hour, at this hour today. Tomorrow when they recognize the five women, when I look at the pictures of the five women, you have Christine Lagarde, who is a politician. You have a filmmaker from the US. You have a Ukrainian lady who is doing education. And then you have an Afghan woman and you have me. So when you look at it, I see the diversity of different women who are coming together who are supporting each other, who are being in partnership. So this is the hope that I do have because it is positive. It doesn't matter that you are coming from Europe or I coming from Africa, I'm coming from Nomadic or I'm coming from... We need to come together. And as women, we need to bring all the solutions. So this is the beauty that I have and that's keep me going. What do you think about the Me Too movement in the United States and all this um, big movement? Me? What do you think about the feminist movement? Mm -hmm. I mean, is this a progress for the, for the condition of a woman? I think finally there is something that's happening, liberating the voices of the women to express their pain and to say what they're experiencing. It's still in Africa and in Chad and in my own culture. Women cannot say so many things because it is shameful, because when you say it, it is not only you, it is all the communities. When the women get rap, they cannot go to the justice. Most of the time, what they say, they say, it is your fault. And then in addition to what she's experiencing, they put a big ball in her head saying, it is your fault. You did it. How you with the mind you have, the education you have, the, the be belief you have, how are you perceived in your own country? I the, mean, you the, are, the beginning... You are annoying, <laughs> you are... The, the beginning have been very difficult to make my voice here in front of the man and then in the middle of the man from the communities to the outside. It have been very difficult Sometimes because I am young. Danger. I did feel in danger in my life in so many times. Because if you have a different view of the world and you are a woman you want to express it, so of course you can get an enemy from many other peoples. And then sometimes they harass you verbally. Sometimes it can be also physically. And you live protected in your country or? In my country now I live protect it because I pass it the way of where they can harass me. I make my voice more strong, but not without a price. I pay very heavy price to do that from all different scale. Because being a woman, being a young woman, being African, being indigenous, so you have all the negative things in you and you have to prove yourself every single day. And this is so but tiring. this is in your own country, right? Yes. Because nowadays, black like people in general are pretty much avenging at the moment. I mean, there are many, many black uh, writers, artists, politicians, uh, singers. I mean, the black presence is now much more present and taken in great consideration in the world nowadays. Is this an impression? It's really depend. There are a lot of black people, emergency or recognitions 
because they did all the effort, they deserve it, they did. Like you. But I can say, yeah, like me, but still I get some threats. When I travel through airports, I get some threats. Just to entering some of the places, I get some threats. You know, it's just like two weeks ago, I can tell you this story. I was in holiday with my husband. He's a white guy from Europe. I'm a black woman. I was sitting alone and reading my book. There was a couple of women that come. They pass it through me, they are nebels. And then with their dog who come over me, they didn't talk to me. They just come and took it and pass. When they saw my husband and then they come and stop and say hi, like they ignore me completely like I do not exist. And when there is this person, I'm, I'm seeing that. What about a white person in Africa? You know, I mean, will he be ignored in the same way or it's not, not the same thing? No, not at all. Not at all. Because we don't have this ignorance of uh, a white person there. Because he already created his space. When he come, he already have his space. No one can ignore him. Like when you have an African in a white country or when you have a white person in Africa, it's completely so two different things. you have to fight against things. racism, against prejudice. Continuously. And this is the tiring part But because again, you have to I improve ask yourself. You, I ask you, women are now in a better position in many countries in the world. I mean, they have advantages they didn't. They are reaching slowly some degree of improvement, right? Do you feel the same in the racist attitude, in the prejudice? It is not the same. The women getting recognitions, it is like the general women. So you can have white women, you can have Asian women, African women, and all, you can get this one. But when you talk about the white and black in, around the racism, you continuously have some who are very racist, and then you have some peoples who are fighting against the racism. Who is going to win? I think one day the reality and the light will win. The light is seeing the peoples equal without choosing the color or countries. This one will win. Maybe it's not soon but it will win because every we are the majority who are standing up for the equity and equality. You have children? Not yet. But what will you teach to your children? Even I do not have yet children. I have nephew, I have nieces. What I'm teaching them every single day, be proud of yourself. Do your dream, what you wanted to do. Don't let anyone break your dream because you are black or because you are white or because you are a woman or because you are man. You can be a woman and you can be strong in your mind, in your culture, in your identity as a man. You can do it. And I do that by using my own examples. When I go to my community, I'm always surrounding with a lot of children and then I'm always telling them that you can do more than me. Don't see me as just a model or extraordinary. I'm not. I'm growing up with you. I'm born with you. I'm eating what you are eating. I'm drinking what you are drinking. So I'm just to like get a chance to get a courage. You can get more than me and you can do it. That's what I'm teaching them all the time. What is your ultimate purpose, your ultimate dream? What do you want to achieve at the end of the day? My dream is having the world who is a better place for everyone. The world where we cannot choose, where everything it is important. You cannot choose white, black, woman, man, but where you have the equity, recognitions, where everything it is important. My dream is the world where the peoples can live in harmony with the nature. We cannot extract from the nature. Yeah, but it's very different. If you live in Frankfurt, or you live in uh, Chicago, or mm -hmm. you live in Manchester, you know, mm -hmm. just to name some cities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you don't live in an African country with elephants and giraffes. And I mean, people live in a completely different <laughs> life, so they're not prepared also uh, uh, no, to live the, with the nature. It, because it, the, you, the issue is, we have to define what is nature. 
the nature, it is not only the worldwide animals. The nature, it's us. We are nature. So the people who are living in Chicago or London or Paris or whatever, they must live in harmony with nature. How they can do that? They must choose what they are buying from the market, if it's harming the nature or not. They must choose to do not spend their times by just like watching the TV 100% or the internet around the nature, but go out to the nature. They are a park. They have to see how is the chicken is growing up. Yeah, but I can see that nowadays many young people around the world, people your age or even younger, are much more aware of that. So that is what we need. No, I mean, I think uh, there is a different awareness today about this. Even the people, the industrialists, you know, this idea of sustainability of the mm, product. Mm. I mean, there is something happening. There is something, I mean, but it is not quick. No war, it is not happening quickly. Yeah, but I mean, it's very slow. So this yeah, is the problem the because we don't have of time. Is not quick. But we don't have time because with the climate impact, with the biodiversity loss, I'm seeing it with my eyes. What is happening? Like the lake chat is vanishing in our eyes. We have all the natural resources that are we are losing. We have species of the animals of the birds that are disappearing. So if we do not stop our way of living, we do not respect the nature, live in harmony with the nature, very fast as to what we are doing, we are going to lose so many. And at the end of the day, we will be ending up with a big flow of migration, north to south, south to north, and then the conflict will be continuously become a reality because people will fight for their own survival. That's why we have to do it very quickly. Thank you very much for this work. Alan Elkan interviews.